Renfuji gets in a fight with his friend Shiru which makes him end up in the hospital. He gets discharged from the hospital and leaves. On the street, he meets his friend Kasumi who visits him daily. Kasumi takes Fuji to a sword exhibition. Fuji doesn't feel comfortable there as he always had a fear of blades. Suddenly, Fuji notices a shadow in the entrance of a nearby room where a guillotine is on display. There he sees the soul of a beautiful girl coming out of the guillotine. He freezes out of terror and Kasumi takes him home. Fuji, Kasumi and Shiru are friends who live in side-by-side -side rooms and they use holes to visit each other. Fuji dreams of that girl singing a creepy song that says the guillotine wants blood to fulfill its thirst. She turns and calls him Cagliostro. Then Fuji sees himself on the guillotine surrounded by people who are shouting for his execution and beheaded with the guillotine. Fuji wakes up shouting and Kasumi comes to check on him. They go to school and notice all the students were talking about the murder case that happened recently in which the head of the victim was cut off. Fuji couldn't hear this all and got out of the classroom. He receives a message from his senior Ria who invites him to the roof. Ria feels sorry for Fuji and Shiru's fight, but Fuji says he doesn't care because Shiru has already left school. Harumo then tells Fuji that she and the sister Riza saw the recent murder with their own eyes. Fuji skips his class and sleeps on the roof. When he wakes up, it's night already. He finds Kasumi practicing taekwondo and they decide to walk home together. On the way, they find Ria talking to a suspicious girl on the street. Ria says she was just asking for directions. The suspicious girl was K, related to a secret society led by Reinhardt who entered the Suwahara city to seek old revenge. The other two members are named Marie and Valeria who will kill anyone who comes in their way. When Fuji scrolls through the history of serial murders happening recently, he realizes that whenever he has that strange dream, someone dies. His thoughts are interrupted by Kasumi and Ria who are looking for him all around the school. On their way back home, Kasumi and Fuji run into Valeria who presents himself as a priest who came back to the city after 10 years. He tells them he is close to Ria and they walk to the church together where they find Ria and Riza. After dinner, Riza informs Fuji about Ria's upcoming birthday and Fuji asks if he could buy her a gift. Ria gets really touched by his gesture and asks him to marry him. On their way back Valeria asks Fuji about his parents. Fuji tells him that his parents died when he was a kid and he got adopted by Kasumi's parents. Valeria asks him if he ever wants to talk to his dead parents, which Fuji finds weird and an impossible wish. After he leaves, Valeria asks Kei about her thoughts as she needs to be part of Suwahara according to their plan. Meanwhile, another character appears whom Valeria calls the Vice Commander's toy. Fuji was struggling with sleeping and suddenly he finds himself on a street where he sees a woman's head being cut off. Ruzalka and Wilhelm, two other members of the secret society appear and torture Fuji to accept that he killed the woman. When Ruzalka blackmails him of his friends, he can't hold back anymore and proceeds to attack her but gets blocked by Wilhelm. Fuji tries his best but he's not a match for Wilhelm. They tell him that they are the members of the secret society Longinus Drizane Orton and were about to kill him. K appears and saves Fuji. Wilhelm calls her inferior and they start arguing. Ruzalka says it's enough and sends Fuji back to a lonely street. All his wounds were healed and it felt like nothing ever happened. The next morning, Fuji is feeling sick. Kasumi advises him to stay home but he goes to school anyway. Ria warns him to be careful. He can't understand why until he runs into Ruzalka and K again dressed up as school students who leave Fuji in shock. Fuji asks Ruzalka if they are responsible for the murders and their intentions. Ruzalka refuses to tell him because they haven't confirmed Fuji's real identity yet. However, she tells him that they are here to fulfill a wish for which they waited for decades. Fuji warns her not to hurt his friends, but Ruzalka laughs it off telling Fuji he is too weak to stop them. After classes Fuji goes to Kasumi to take her home. Kasumi says she wants to distract herself by practicing Taekwondo. It's been a week since Fuji's fight with the secret society but he couldn't get it out of his mind. While going back home they see some kids which remind them of their childhood. Valeria tells Kay that the murders are planned to collect enough souls for the sacrifice to satisfy the guillotine's thirst. Just like it was done several years ago. But the ritual couldn't be completed as other conditions weren't met. Fuji dreams about the girl again who calls herself Marie while sleeping over a park bench. Fuji wakes up and looks for Kasumi. During his search he runs into Kei again. She tells him about the story of a mage who once controlled an army of a certain nation in his madness and turned them into inhuman creatures. His name was Karl Kraft, now possessing the body of Mercurius. The Mercury symbol represents two characters, the secondary and the main. 
she tells Fuji that Kasumi was just a secondary character, and her existence was just to make a path for the main character. Her own life doesn't matter. Fuji refuses to believe this all and continues to search for Kasumi. He finds Kasumi standing covered in blood and some power starts to surround her. Those powers belong to Fuji but Kasumi is trying to help him somehow. Fuji tells her she has always been a support to him but this time let him deal with it himself. He brings Kasumi back home and decides to handle this matter solely. Meanwhile, Valeria gets informed about the progress of their plan and celebrates. Kasumi has lost memories of what happened at the amusement park and Fuji starts to avoid her. Kei invites Fuji to meet her at school at night to learn how to use his powers. There's a society of 13 members who all have a wish to fulfill just like Kei. Once they tried to perform a ritual decades ago during World War II but failed. Now they are planning to do it again. Several members of the society have been replaced, but some seats are currently empty. Everything is being looked over by Mercurius. His plan is to gather enough power for the ritual through a war but needs an enemy. Fuji is going to be that enemy. Kei is instructed to teach Fuji to use his power so he can be a competitive foe. These powers are like a weapon that eats souls. You can convert it into a physical weapon and the more people you kill the stronger you will be. There are different stages to mastering the skills and Fuji is at the first stage called activity. When Kasumi asks why Fuji was avoiding her, Fuji lies that he's dating Kei. Fuji dreams about the same girl again and wishes her to have a happy life. Fuji finds Riza and Ria looking for father Valeria. When Fuji follows Valeria, he suspects him of having strange powers. Before he can get to a conclusion, he gets a call from Rot who has kidnapped Kazumi. Fuji doesn't waste a second and finds her. Rot traps Fuji in a powerful web as soon as he arrives there. Rot tells him that he will take his practical examinations. When Rot continuously triggers Fuji, Fuji's powers awake and he learns the second stage. Formation regenerating his body parts into dangerous weapons. Rot gets scared to death and tries to kill Kasumi, but Valeria allows him to become a feast for Fuji's powers. At home, Fuji hugs Kazumi satisfied that he saved her. Fuji dreams about Marie's life. Marie was born during an execution of a priest carried out by her father. All she spoke was the creepy song about guillotine thirsting for blood. She became a display of terror, and whoever touches her gets their head cut off. The people decided to execute her on the guillotine. This was the first time Carl saw her and fell in love. He decided to make Marie his goddess. When Fuji wakes up and finds Marie naked in his bed, but she doesn't remember anything and touching her doesn't cause death. Kasumi sees them but believes Fuji when he says she may have come from outside. Kasumi mistakes her for a foreigner and decides to give her a round around town till they find out where she came from. Fuji tries to ask Marie about Cagliostro but gets interrupted by a girl named Iri who takes them to Shiru, who has been living in a club since he got out of hospital. Shiru and his girlfriend Iri have been involved with the secret society and want to take advantage of them. They ask Fuji for his help, but Fuji refuses to do because it could cost their lives. Fuji tells Marie that he and Shiru always kept each other secret, but Shiru broke their agreement which led them to a fight. Fuji tells Marie to not to be around him just because someone else told her to. Marie assures him their relationship will not be like that and disappears back into Fuji's mind. Kei comes to take Fuji to meet the priest but Wilhelm interrupts them to check out Fuji's new skills. However, his attention diverts to Shiru who appears out of nowhere on his bike. Shiru suffers from a mysterious condition in which he experiences continuous deja vu. To cure it he keeps trying new wild things but it doesn't help. When Wilhelm tries to attack Shiru, he dodges easily as he can predict others' moves due to his deja vu ability. Meanwhile, Fuji is fighting with Kei and he comes across Valeria. He can't believe that Valeria is another member of the secret society. While trying to escape, Shiru relied on Iri, who was also guiding him from a control room, which enabled him to get past Wilhelm. Valeria asks Fuji if he will ever kill Ria if he gets a reason. Fuji replies he will never kill any of his friends and will fight the secret society. Valeria laughs at him and invites their leader Reinhard to witness Fuji's huge expectations. Reinhard appears from a strange light and introduces himself to Fuji. Fuji transforms into a complete monster to fight Reinhard. Suddenly a huge golden armored skeleton appears from the sky along with an army of millions of soldiers' souls aircrafts and ships. This all belongs to Reinhard. Fuji tries his best, but he can't even cause a scratch. His blade couldn't slash Reinhard neck, whose powers force Fuji back into his human form. The reversal causes Marie's soul to separate from him. Fuji falls while Reinhard captures Marie. 
After getting pierced by Reinhard, Marie opens her eyes in a banquet hall dancing with Reinhard who keeps asking him strange questions. Meanwhile, Fuji opens his eyes and finds himself chained. Fuji remembers his past. He didn't have a normal birth. He was from the bloodline of Carl and was brought up in a lab by Kasumi's father. All of these events were Fuji's fate. Ria comes to Fuji to unlock him and tells him she has also led a similar life, which is like a fragile dream that can be shattered anytime. After her departure, Valeria takes Fuji to Reinhardt on the way he tells Fuji that Rhea doesn't know much. She has lived a normal life but sometimes gets in trouble because of being surrounded by creatures like them. Reinhardt has invited Fuji to meet at a Longinus 3 Zane Orden table. He calls this war Dai He tells him all the details of what's happening in Suwahara City. Carl Kraft is a man like no other and he is known to possess hundreds of people including Cagliostro and now Mercurius. He also inspired Reinhard's actual desire for destruction. Before Reinhard used to live an ordinary life where he felt like he was in the wrong world and suffered from deja vu. But now he wants to create a new world worthy of himself. He tried by destroying Berlin during World War II but that sacrifice was not enough. Now he wants to do it again on a bigger scale in Suwahara City. Eight battlefields around the town will be created to generate an alchemy circle of eight swastikas that will fulfill the secret society's wishes. Reinhard invites Fuji to join his league as he has no other choice. But Fuji refuses while asking back for Marie and challenges Reinhard. On the next day, the war is about to begin and the members of Longinus Drizane Orden are preparing themselves for it. On the other hand, Fuji and Shiru are also getting prepared. The first thing is to protect their loved ones. Shiru takes responsibility for Kasumi while Fuji leaves Rhea to Valeria. With Iri's help, Fuji figures out that the eight swastikas are the public park, the civic hall and the hospital owned by Iri's parents. These all crowded places so there will be enough souls to sacrifice. Fuji can't be at the six open swastikas, so he chooses to go to school first and asks for Iri to do something to protect the people at the hospital. Most students are brought to the school under hypnosis and Fuji feels helpless as he can't do anything about the situation. He lays down thinking about the carefree life he had once. He wishes to go back to those ordinary happy days. But Yuri lied to Fuji about the school being the swastika while the actual swastika was the club. Ruzelka starts capturing souls there. Shiru and Yuri try to kill her, but all their efforts are in vain. Meanwhile, Wilhelm encounters Valeria asking what his secret intentions are. Riza is also one of the members of the secret society. In the past, she was in charge of an experiment to give children special powers but they all died. Riza wishes to bring them back to life as it was her fault. She was used to give birth to Reinhard's child. She fears him but he could make her wish come true. Kasumi was hospitalized after the club's incident. Fuji gets sad thinking Shiru and Iri are dead, but Marie cheers him up. Fuji tries to stop Riza who wants to open the swastika at the hospital, but Kei gets in his way and is stronger than Fuji. Valeria meets Riza and reveals her secret. She had given birth to twins. Isak looked like Reinhard but was sacrificed on the first ritual attempt. The other was Johan but was hidden away to live a normal life. Meanwhile, the amusement park swastika opens. Kei tells Fuji that soon her wish to bring back her loved ones will be granted. Fuji says that comparing the value of our loved ones to any kind of mass sacrifice is an insult. These words make Kei doubt herself making a Leonor attack her and challenge Fuji. In the past, Kei's grandfather created replicas of possessed blades. The replicas were so strong that they possessed and killed their own creator. This curse traveled through his bloodline. Kei joined Reinhard's plan to revive her brother and sister. Outside, Fuji was holding up against the Leonor's heavy attacks. He falls unconscious and Marie comes out to protect him. Kei, Riza, Beatrice, and Eleonor were good friends, but Berlin's sacrifice changed it. Riza doesn't want Eleonor to get involved because her wish was granted during the sacrifice of Berlin. But Kei supports Eleonor in keeping Riza away because she wants to protect Kasumi. Marie protects Ren from Eleonor and realizes how much he has been through. Ren wakes up. They combine their powers to protect each other. Eleonor is ready to open the swastika completely. Riza uses her attacking spirit to guide Fuji towards saving Kasumi, and then orders it to take Kei out of there. She sacrificed herself to save others. Meanwhile, Valeria invites Fuji into creating their own alliance to take revenge. Shiru talks to Mercury's and finds out that Kasumi's father was a mad scientist, who created her in an unnatural way and also kept the origin of Fuji a secret. He kept performing experiments on Fuji which developed hatred in both Fuji's and Shiru's hearts. At the age of six Shiru finally killed him, but it was all planned by Mercurius, who uses Hiru as a toy. 
he believes Shiru resembles Reinhard because of the deja vu condition. Back at the church, Ruzalka tells Rhea about Riza's death and their relationship. Suddenly Wilhelm appears and tells Ruzalka that she never killed Shiru. Shiru tears Ruzalka's stomach and gets out of her body. He steals her powers and fights against Wilhelm. Rasulka is barely alive when she sees Wolfgang, a member of the secret society, opening the swastika in the church. She confesses her love to him and asks for help but Wolfgang lets out a creepy laugh saying he will kill the person who did this to her. Meanwhile, Wilhelm introduces Shiru to the evil spirit Helga living inside him which makes him stronger. However, he gets killed by Wolfgang because he wants to kill Shiru himself to get Rasulka's revenge. As Rasulka still has some life left in her, Wolfgang let Shiru go. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.